Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to one of our special videos introducing one of our guest panelists for the Central Asia Trade Forum. We're absolutely delighted that Konstantin Alshev is joining us from KPMG today, and you'll be able to hear more from him when he's a guest on the Wednesday, the 6th of October session, which is focusing on transport and logistics and the impact of digitalization across Central Asia. So a very warm welcome, Konstantin. Thank you. Hi, hi, John. Hi, colleagues. Thank you. Excellent. So let's get straight down to the question. So first of all, uh, Konstantin, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in logistics and your experience really with digital and what you do at KPMG? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, so, actually, I have more experience in the digital world overall, and then uh, uh, particularly in the logistics sector. Uh, well, I have uh, about uh, 10 years, slightly more, uh, background in IT, cyber, technology, advising different companies uh, in the region of CIS, mainly in Kazakhstan and other Central Asian countries, uh, on digital transformation, uh, cybersecurity, uh, new technologies, implementation, and so on. Um, we have more clients in uh, the area of uh, public sector, financial sector in these countries, uh, but also I have uh, quite a number of clients uh, in uh, logistics, in airlines, in railways, and uh, even some interesting pro pro projects for uh, customs checkpoints. Excellent. Thank you so much for that rundown. Now, we know that KPMG have been responsible for a key bit of research, and we're going to hear about that um, at the Central Asia Trade Forum. But perhaps you could just give us a bit of an insight um, to the digital uh, research work that you've been conducting across Central Asia with KPMG. Yeah, John. Uh, okay. Yeah, this uh, study actually it was based on uh, KPMG global reports and KPMG similar studies, uh, where my colleagues uh, studied um, the priorities and the challenges uh, for uh, those responsible for digital transformation. Uh, so we tried uh, to discuss uh, the similar topics with uh, CIOs, uh, CTO, CTO in uh, our countries in uh, Kazakhstan. Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Tajikistan. Uh, and so uh, we tried to did it uh, in, um, in an open questions manner. Uh, so uh, try to discuss uh, personally with uh, different, um, uh, with, with persons, with directors from different companies, different sectors, including logistics. Uh, what are their uh, priorities? What are their common uh, problems, common pitfalls, uh, common challenges in implementation of uh, digital technologies? Um, what uh, can I um, maybe dis discuss now and highlight uh, so some points? And, well, um, actually what surprised me was uh, that uh, uh, we all have uh, some common uh, problems and common ideas, common views between all, all the regions in the world, but of course uh, with uh, uh, some minor, uh, minor, minor changes, uh, minor uh, different um, uh, points maybe, yeah. Uh, for example, uh, I was surprised uh, that um, despite uh, the uh, where, uh, despite the existence of um, many concerns regarding cloud technologies uh, among companies uh, in our region, I mean, uh, this topic uh, is of particular interest for these companies and uh, they are going to increase the investments in cloud technologies in the nearest future. Uh, mainly in Kazakhstan, of course, in other countries, the situation is uh, a little bit different and business is interested in mo more in basic um, infrastructure uh, investments, update of IT infrastructure, investment in uh, network, uh, in, in networks, in data warehouses uh, and so on. Um, and another point that I um, was uh, su surprised, uh, it's um, uh, that uh, the view on the skill set and that uh, future employees should have. Uh, again, uh, we have some uh, common uh, things between all the countries, uh, but actually the picture differs a lot between um, Kazakhstan and other countries in the region. I would highlight it uh, more in my presentation, but uh, I saw, for example, that uh, 
in other countries uh, we have more focus on uh, traditional uh, programming skills while in Kazakhstan uh, we saw uh, more um, we saw that the companies are more keen on uh, such contemporary technologies like low code no code uh, some cloud technologies and so on excellent thank you so much for that um, really good introduction to your study and obviously people will hear more about that on the panel um, let's talk a little bit bigger picture now so just from your experience where do you think digitalization will now go now you can answer that from a, a central asia perspective or from a wider global perspective but what do you think the pace of change is going to look like is it going to continue to be rapid post covid um, mm -hmm. or is there going to be a bit more measured pace what what do you think constantin mm -hmm. yeah i see the question um well, actually, I think it should be rapid because, uh, as we know, each new trend uh, it takes uh, less time uh, than the previous well, the previous trends to uh, reach the hype and then to uh, either to penetrate uh, to, to, to all the businesses or disappear. And I think it, uh, this situation will continue uh, both uh, globally and in our local markets. Uh, but if we talk to uh, central about Central Asia region. Uh, here we see that uh, people are even more keen on quick wins than in other countries. Of course, everywhere in the world we can uh, see that uh, management is looking for greater uh, return on investment and uh, shorter payback periods. Um, but in Central Asia, it's, um, it's extremely uh, higher rotation rate among uh, companies' management. Uh, this trend is even even brighter yes so uh, the uh, penetration and adaptation rate uh, could be not so high uh, if uh, technology cost uh, will be quite higher quite sensitive for the companies yeah, for, the, for, for the business yeah, because uh, uh, the managers try to focus on uh, short investments on short short, uh, short return of uh, from these investments while the technologies uh, become uh, more expensive uh, often yeah uh, and if we talk to particular technologies, yeah, to particular trends in logistics, um, here I, I guess that uh, the main uh, point, the main trigger, uh, the main driver, enabler, uh, I don't know how, how, how to better characterize it, yeah, is uh, a trend on track and trace projects on serialization, yeah, uh, because uh, we see that globally and uh, here in Central Asia, uh, more and more products um, uh, are required to be track and traced uh, from uh, the beginning, from the um, from the manufacturer until the end customer, yeah, and, uh, and, and consumer. And uh, actually, this trend uh, it um, results in many other technologies that need to be implemented, um, both in retailers, in manufacturers, and of course in uh, logistic uh, operators. Okay, thank you, Constantin. Again, a, a really good answer. Um We've talked so far a lot about the technology and about the digitalization sort of process and, you know, the quick wins that business may look for. Um, but there's a human factor here as well, isn't there? So what kind of things are going to have to happen in the way people work in Central Asia? Their kind of their work um, ethic, their work pace, changes in work culture. Is it Has there got to be something going on in that space as well to get the most of the digital toolbox? Mm -hmm. um, well, quite interesting, actually, still difficult question for me, uh, because uh, now we can see a big difference uh, between uh, users' culture, uh, between uh, customers in different regions, in different countries uh, within the region, and within the different uh, cities, uh, different uh, sub-regions in Central Asia, yeah? Uh, so different uh, culture, different uh, user behavior, uh, and so on. Yeah, the di different digital maturity, uh, and it is um, quite difficult to uh, answer for overall uh, for, for for the whole region. Yeah, um, but um, if I try to do this, yeah, I think uh, I'm quite optimistic. Yeah, and so uh, I think that uh, the life should should become easier. Yeah, that, but uh, we. Um, like everywhere in the world, uh, our consumers uh, become uh, more uh, more demanding yeah, in terms of quality, in terms of uh, velocity of the service. Uh, 
uh, yeah, and, and uh, this trend uh, will continue. Um, also, another point is uh, that uh, governments uh, take uh, many uh, take a lot of steps uh, in terms. Um, towards the digitalization of uh, all the sectors uh, of economy uh, in all these countries. Yeah, uh, almost uh, every week we have uh, some conversations with uh, uh, government authorities in all these uh, countries, uh, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. And uh, they, um, they invest uh, a lot of time, resources now in artificial intelligence, in blockchain projects, in uh, uh, digital assets, and so on. Yeah, so uh, this, um, uh, all these trends, all these technologies, they should find implementation in, uh, for example, logistics sector, yeah, uh, because of, uh, if we take um, again serialization, yeah, we should. Uh, uh, it, it is this field where we can uh, find the application, uh, for example, of uh, smart con contracts, yeah, uh, to realize some uh, different interesting DVP models, uh, some different um, um, tracing um, solutions, and so on. Uh, so, for the customer point of view, I think um, their uh, life should be uh, sh should become more convenient. Uh, we, we will demand uh, require a better service, uh, but um, at the same time, of, of course, uh, we are becoming more aware of um, different risks associated with technologies like cybercrime, like uh, IT fraud, and so on, like uh, disclosing of our personal data, and so on. But um, here, I think, and I see, and our actually KPMG reports confirm this, uh, that in terms of uh, personal um, personal cyber protection, uh, the situation is not so so, so bad. Yeah, and uh, now when we are discussing uh, the companies, uh, they. Um, report that they mm, did not experience uh, attacks that resulted in, um, in that resulted in some losses of uh, money of data of end point, uh, of end customers yeah, of individuals, uh, but at the same time they see and uh, and we see uh, as their advisors yeah, uh, that uh, cyber crime become uh, more mature and it uh, um, their it, it um, uh, cyber attacks took more time to start taking more time, uh, but they result in greater losses uh, of uh, greater losses for the companies, not for the uh, end customers here, yeah, but for the companies uh, as a whole. And here, yeah, we uh, I see that uh, risks uh, becoming uh, are becoming more important. Excellent. Thank you very much, Constantin. And I think what you're summarising there is that there is kind of a a human impact here. So whether it's the end customer, whether it's uh, reskilling, or whether it's protecting, oh, you know, businesses as customers, um, there's kind of a bit of a golden thread running through this, and we'll pick up on that again uh, on the panel. Um, before um, it's time to go, perhaps is there anything else that you just want to share from your own thinking or from your research, um, just as a taster um, ahead of the the panel in a couple of weeks' time. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, maybe uh, I, I would. Uh, I, I know one point. Yeah, maybe I would just um, uh, give you some quote. Yeah, from one of the respondents. Uh, yes. Yeah. That uh, w when we were discussing the uh, um, recent trends, uh, recent um, uh, attention to big data projects, the data analytics, um, and uh, uh, here he uh, said, well. Guys, uh, there are, uh, it, it is already about five years uh, when uh, all the companies, all banks, uh, uh, huge businesses, uh, tel telco operators, and so on, and they say that um, they and they do have uh, big data and they do analyze big data. Uh, but uh, what uh, we uh, receive as a result of this analysis is just an SMS that. Uh, uh, Mm, hey, you uh, you have a discount in a neighborhood bar uh, for the beer, yeah. Uh, but you would go to this uh, bar even without this SMS, and and that's all for big data analysis. And actually, it uh, it it really depicts the situation in the region. But we see that uh, changes are coming, and we will discuss it in the presentation. 
Excellent. So there's plenty to look forward to, everyone. Um, if you're coming along and joining us virtually at the Central Asia Trade Forum, again, Wednesday, the 6th of October, you'll hear certainly more from Constantin as he unpacks some of his research and also takes part in the discussion. Uh, Constantin, we're out of time, but thank you so much for uh, sharing your insights with us today. And we look forward very much to seeing you thank next you. at the CATF. Thank you. Yeah, see you. Thank you.